Hey guys, how the hell are you? Today we are going to do an all new unbiased gear review on this, the Dean Gordon Super T. So first let's go over the specs of this instrument. We have a Honduran mahogany body that is bolted onto this beautiful black stained maple neck with a rosewood fingerboard, 24 stainless steel frets, hip shot hardware. We have master volume, master tone, a five way blade switch. And we have DiMarzio pickups in here. We have an Igno in the bridge, and we have a PAF Pro in the neck. 25 and a half inch scale, 12 to 16 inch compound radius on the fretboard, and this thing is made to kick ass. So it has been a while since a Dean Gordon guitar has made its way onto this channel, and I'm very, very happy that... Dean decided to grace me with the presence of this new prototype Super T that he sent me. This is a fucking rock beast of a guitar. First thing that you would probably notice when initially picking this up is how thin the body is compared to a typical Telecaster or Esquire style. This uh, body measures just below an inch and a half thick, so it's a relatively thin piece of lumber. That being said, it still has some heft to it, so definitely uh, a nice heavy piece of wood, which is something that I actually really, really like, especially when the instrument has as much resonance as this guitar does. The neck has your standard C shape, albeit to me, it feels just ever so slightly thicker than your typical uh, garden variety Fender. Maybe not, maybe it's been forever since I've actually played a garden variety Fender and maybe I'm just not used to this shape that much anymore, but to me, this is just what I'm feeling. Um, taking a look at the construction, the routing for the pickups and the bridge and even the neck is nice and clean and crisp. The, uh, there are some really nice appointments on here in that we've got recessions for the bolts on the neck. We've got a nice recessed uh, string ferrule right there. The choice of hardware, Hipshot is definitely something that, I, I love this brand of hardware. I think that they make incredible quality stuff. Um, the LSR style tuning machines on there that are kind of nice and out of the way uh, is a nice aesthetic touch. Uh, in addition to functionality, lots of good grip on those tuning pegs too. This thing holds its tuning exceptionally well. Uh, I've kind of put it through the paces for this whole last week, and 
barely have needed to tune up at all. The knobs that are on here for the volume and the tone are also uh, a really nice aesthetic touch too. Has a lot of good grip on it and it's kind of reminiscent of the knobs that were on that Dusty Waring PRS that I checked out not too long ago. Let's see, the black hardware on the mahogany body is also really aesthetically pleasing, as is the stained black neck, which has a really, really nice feel to it. Speaking of a nice feel, of course, that thing that we always look for on these instruments that I review, check out those beautiful fret edges, nicely rolled off, nice uh, rolled off fretboard edge too to make it nice and comfortable to play this guitar. Um, just really effortless playability. Uh, Dean has kind of thought of everything in making this a nice kind of basic instrument, uh, sort of kind of stripped down in its appointment and just trying to make something that every single thing that's here is here for a reason and is done exceptionally well. Yeah, I just, I, I can't say enough good things about how this thing plays. So there are a couple of things that I would point out here, and I did address them with Dean, and he says that part of it is because this is a prototype guitar, so obviously he would never ever let something like this go out to an actual paying client. There is a little bit of finish that pulled up right here next to the neck joint. And like I said, Dean says that it's not something that would actually go out to a paying client. But because it's on this instrument I'm reviewing, I do need to kind of call it out a little bit. Same thing as well goes with regards to um, the setup. So as awesome as this thing played when I did receive it, it did need a very, very slight tweakage on the B string here. The B string uh, was giving me some buzz when I initially unpacked this and let it set for about a day so that it could get acclimated. But, you know, just a quick raising of the saddle and adjusting the intonation and hey, we're back in business no more buzz to speak of, so this thing back to playing as kick-ass as it was meant to. Um, one other thing that's on here too is this Schaller five-way switch that's on here is a bit tight. It is an extremely secure switch. So if you're one of those guys that, you know, if you're going between the pickups and you like to actually put it in a spot and just fuck it, it is staying there no matter what you do. Hey, cool, this is a really badass switch for you, but for a guy like myself that, you know, when I'm playing in the heat of the moment, I tend to just flip things up, flip things down, flip things up really quickly. Uh, that is a little bit too tight for my taste as a player personally. Not necessarily something that is lending itself to the uh, quality of the instrument, but it is definitely something that is preferential uh, on a player-by-player -player basis, so it bears mentioning. So how's this guitar sound? Pretty fucking kick-ass, that's how it sounds. <laughs> So I got to admit, when I heard that this had a DiMarzio Igno bridge pickup, I was kind of eh, indifferent about it, maybe at best, because I'm not exactly a Polyphia fan. Um, but at the same time, you know, hey, it's just the gear, right? So it might actually be pretty kick-ass, and I was very pleasantly surprised this bridge pickup is really, really killer for the heavy stuff. <laughs> Run 
running this thing through my Marshall valve state that I recently picked up, I am getting some killer old school death metal mojo out of this thing. Man, it's just... Uh, everything about how this thing sounds just makes me want to not stop playing it. It just sounds brutal. It sounds heavy. Perfect for a lot of different applications. <laughs> And then moving on to the neck pickup, dude, this is a DeMarzio PAF Pro. Always been one of my favorite neck pickups from any company, really. This is the pickup that you used to always hear in those old school gem models that Ivan has put out forever ago. Uh, like the old floral print one, for example. It just has a nice vintage vibe to it that's slightly hotter. Ooh, just really, really nice and sweet sounding. sounds just ever so slightly meaty for a neck position humbucker and extremely articulate and clear just just a beautiful tone <laughs> So my final thought, dude, this is a kick-ass instrument. Dean has killed it yet again. Um, definitely something that I could see myself playing for a good long time because it is just a joy to play on. It oozes rock mojo when you look at it, and when you play it, it is a fucking metal machine. Uh, tellies aren't typically my thing, but this is definitely something that I could see myself playing for a long time. So I hear what you're saying, but Arnold, what are you drinking today? I am so glad you asked. Let's go to the beer fridge and find out. Today, from one of my favorite breweries, Anchorage Brewing Company in Anchorage, Alaska, I am having Hell Trinken, which is a Hell's Lager. Probably my favorite type of lager because of just how rich and golden it tastes. It definitely tastes like a little bit stronger of an ale, even though it's only a 5.3 alcohol by volume lager. But so good. So good. Just a beautiful white head on there. Rocky head for a lager. Look at that crisp, light golden color that pours out. Nice, clean uh, aroma to it. Definitely uh, something that smells like beer. It's not something that's got like a lot of complex notes in the aroma, if you ask me. It just smells like a typical beer that you would have on a lazy Sunday like this. Mmm. But the flavor, though, that, that tastes really, really nice. It tastes a little woodsy. Uh, maybe a little bit of wheatgrass in there, still with that rich golden flavor that is really kind of mouth filling. Um, it's uh, just kind of rich for a lager. It's definitely like for the, for people out there that you like your Millers and your Budweisers and stuff like that. This is probably the beer that you need to try 
to find out how that shit should really taste. A Hell's Lager, especially this one from Anchorage Brewing, is just kind of in the same ballpark, but just way richer in flavor. This is really good. So that's it for me. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. There's lots more content to come. Take care.